All right, today I have a quick review of these Lantern and Wren uh, dotting tools. And um, they are double-ended. And that's the other side in different sizes. And they have different color gems in them. And they're really, really pretty. Um, one thing to note, the writing, Lantern and Run, is not acetone proof. So um, you want to be careful not to get acetone or remover on that. Um, but these are really, really pretty dotting tools. And um, because of the thickness, they feel really nice in the hand when you're using them. The one that I'm going to pay particular attention to in review is this one, the pink one, which has an end that looks like a water marble um, tool on one end. And I think it's still supposed to be meant for dotting. It's a smooth tip. Um, I will compare that to, um, this is the Pure Color um, number seven water marbling tool uh, that I use most often. And as you can see, the dotting tool, the Lantern and Run one, is a little bit thicker and it's not as pointy on the end. And I'll talk about why that matters in a bit. Um, but um, it's fairly the same size and, um, and, and similar. So I'm going to show you um, how I used it for water marbling here. Okay. So I have my um, setup. I'm using a bunch of uh, Bluebird Lacquer, um, the Rain Bros collection. I have uh, six different oranges and uh, reds and purples. And I have my little cleanup um, bottle for my tool that I stuck a sponge in and acetone and that's what I use to clean the tool in between um, draws and um, I have my nails painted with two coats of white finger paints um, paper mache which is one of my favorite whites and a clear um, latex on I sort of let this dry out so I've added water but I added too much water so I need to let that dry out some more again because um, I am down near the end of that. So what I'm using is my clear um, water mar clear latex for water marbling. I want to make sure that the water is clean before I get started. Okay. And I'm just going to make a um, normal eight ring bullseye. I just want to make sure that they, that spreads to the edges there. A purple, a red. And this is a different orange. These three here are from the fall collection and they're a little dusty, which I really like. And I want to make sure that this orange spreads before I add the last drop, the purple. Okay. And there's a pretty standard eight ring um, bullseye. So I'm gonna draw just a regular flower pattern, um, just drawing in. And because this tool is a little bit thicker, you really wanna make sure that when you draw in, you're using just the very tip of the tool, okay? And that's important because if you you if you dip too much and, and you use it the thicker um, bit you are going to draw too much polish and then it's harder to control your design Okay, and I'm gonna stop right there because I can see a portion that I know I want to dip. 
and I want to dip with all the petals facing outward like that. So I'm just gonna line that up. Okay, and I'm gonna dip in that portion there. And it really helps me to um, line it up and hold with my other hand so that I can position and dip. And then clean up the water. And I check for air bubbles near the cuticle and pull out slowly and that's what it looks like. So I just make sure that there are no air bubbles that I need to sort of pop near the cuticle like this one because I think it's better for the design if you pop those before you remove the latex otherwise the latex can uh, cause some problems all right so just cut up the back and and there you go Thanks for watching.